Hey everybody, it's uh, Brian at Witch Doctor. Thanks for tuning in. Wanted to do a brief um, debrief uh, of the first match of uh, first group uh, match of my 2024 season. Uh, the match was shot this past weekend in the Tacoma, Washington, United States um, region of the world, and it was a sanctioned match, sanctioned by the National Bench Rest Shooters Association (NBRSA). Um, the Precision Rifleman is the magazine that they produce, and uh, you get it as part of your uh, dues to the association. Uh, anyway, and so um, first match for me, not the first match of the season. They had that last month. I had to miss that, um, but uh, definitely was eager to get out and shoot. <laughs> haven't shot a group match like this in a while, so... Um, a little rusty, but uh, definitely was uh, uh, happy uh, going into my first match. And uh, essentially, um, I did the same thing that I did last year. Um, I went ahead and, you know, uh, put a Harris tuner uh, and uh, did the same kind of uh, tuning that I, in previous videos here, you, you can see how I use the tuner and the data that I've collected on it. Um, and so this is my essentially light varmint rifle, but I, I use it in all the different classifications. I use it in sporter, heavy varmint, um, and light varmint. So I'm, I'm the type that just uses one rifle. Um, too confusing if there's to me if I'm using more than one. But anyway, so um, went into the match. Now, the only reason why I'm doing a video on this is because there's a, a few key elements here that I just wanted to share with people to see if this may be helpful to you. Um, one is the data-driven mentality. So uh, you obviously <laughs> have seen, you know, my videos. I do extensive testing, um, shoot um, uh, high sam uh, sample sizes, uh, adequate enough to have uh, the statistical power to detect whether an effect is, you know, um, you know, not due to chance. And uh, anyway, so um, one major thing with this match that uh, uh, it, that previous data helped me <laughs> to um, kind of um, make an, a quick adjustment uh, was the barometric pressure leading up to the match was pretty high. So out here where I live, you know, anything above 29.7 is kind of on the higher end of pressure. Anything below 29.7 is on the low end. That's kind of the, the cutoff. And what happens according to my data, um, and I've basically shot tons of five shot groups over the course of uh, years in different barometric pressure, temperature and humidity conditions, and found that um, if you develop a load in high pressure, if there's a low pressure system below, you know, 29.7 HG, um, then that load uh, doubles in size uh, for the six PPC. So, um, and, and then I also then studied tuners. Uh, I studied this Harris. I've also studied the Azel and the Bramley DSB, and they essentially do the same thing. They they you know once you're you're loaded and ready to go, um, and that you have a low pressure condition come in, you just turn the tuner um, one hash mark, and then that will uh, regain the tune for you. So so here's the deal. Going into the mat, I, so I had loaded this rifle under high pressure conditions. Okay, and I know that because I take copious notes on this stuff. And um, basically, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday before the match, a lot of people show up to the match to practice. So it's not uncommon that uh, you'll see RVs out there, uh, you know, and, and several shooters, you know, uh, practicing. Um, typically, Friday is the heaviest day. And so our match reserves the first nine benches for those people because we know, you know, a lot of people are coming a day before to practice. So all those days were high pressure days. I, I, I look at my weather app and I look at the forecast and what I saw was all high pressure and then boom, the pressure dropped uh, Saturday morning, uh, late, late Friday night. Um, and it was slated to stay low, like 29.5 uh, throughout the entire weekend. And so knowing that, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, my load was developed under high pressure conditions. I'm going to essentially um, go to the match in a, in a, in a low pressure situation. Uh, to me, I, I basically decided I wasn't going to go and practice or try to do load, final load development or, or confirmatory load development on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. 
um, because I knew, you know, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a low pressure system when I actually shoot the match. So all I'm going to do is turn the tuner one hash. So that's essentially what I did. Um, I, I, I went ahead and just did other things on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, with my life, then, um, go to the range. Uh, because again, I have a data driven mentality. I know the data and the data says, this is what you do for this type of situation. And you should be able to then go in and, uh, either regain a tune or or start the match with a good tune, and so that was that was the first key thing, um, and then there were some others. But let's go ahead and just sort of describe the match. It was very windy, very wet, uh, pr pretty miserable basically. And uh, first, first, you know, we started at a hundred yards, and you know the sporter class, and and you know the group was kind of big. It was sort of a clover leaf, uh, two seventy eight. And, you know, at that point, I was like, well, I might be marginally, uh, you know, my tune might be marginal. However, <laughs> with the amount of wind, wind gusts going from our back forward, left, right, um, I wasn't too worried about the, the tune at this point because I knew this could be conditions and conditions were switching fast. Um, one thing that uh, another big takeaway, the second big takeaway uh, for this video is I was in the scope a lot shooting these groups. And what I realized <laughs> was um, I probably could have shot heads up more than I did. Um, heads up shooting is essentially where you get your rifle, your rest all set up, get your point of impact on your record target, and then just literally raise your head and pay close, close attention to the flag so that right when the condition you want to shoot in occurs, you, you fire. Um, I've seen videos of like Tony, Tony Boyer doing this and others, and I've done it myself many, many times. But for whatever reason in this match, uh, I just sort of forgot, probably because I just haven't shot this style of match in a while. So that was kind of um, one other big thing was, you know, in order to uh, improve for the next performance, I need to keep that in mind. So anyway, um, next one, I shot a 206. So definitely better. And, um, you know, at that point I was pretty confident. Yeah, it, it, the gun's in tune. I'm just, you know, there's just conditions out here that are difficult and everyone else is shooting, you know, bigger than 206, you know, and, and so I'm pretty confident at that point, things are going well. Um, next one was a 263. Notice it's horizontal. There's lots of wind going on. 252, kind of a big hole. And then back to 209. So low two was probably, you know, the best I can muster under those situations. And I was certainly happy with that. And frankly, you know, out of everyone in the field, um, it got me the second place at 100 yards. So um, not bad at all. Um, rifle was in tune. So then I, we go to 200. Well, actually, we did 200 the next day. We did 100, 100. Um, on Saturday, 200, 200 on Sunday, but I'm just gonna go in order of, of um, the classification. So I'm just gonna stick with Sporter for now. Um, 438 was the first match, um, and that, that was pretty good. Uh, lots of people <laughs> were all over the place, let me tell you, because the wind was extremely difficult. Um, this one was, uh, I, I had to pick this one where, um, I would shoot and then a condition would change and then I'd have to go down to the cider, shoot the cider to see, you know, where did the condition, obviously think a lot of left wind uh, in the match. And so you can see here, I went down the cider, shot left. And then what I did out here is I had to hold um, like out here to then get it to land over here. So I had a lot of holds. Um, I had to pick some, some, some groups, um, 506. This one was another picker. Um, 440, so I'm getting a little bit better. And then, bam, 190. Um, the wind just, you know, the, the left-hand winds are atrocious. I don't know, for whatever reason, left-hand winds are not good. Uh, and, and a lot of shooters will say that, like, these left hand left hand is the worst for me. We prefer the right. Um, and so it kind of died down and was extremely mild. And so, and, and it was very, you know, and it persisted for some time. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to shoot a few on record. Um, just, you know, see what, what, you know, generally where I should, you know, where I'm impacting kind of here on the second ring. 
And then I decided I'm just gonna shoot really slow. And so I just sort of chambered around, took my time, went in the scope, made sure my aim point was perfect, fired. Um, you know, when I say took my time, I don't mean like, you know, <laughs> a whole minute or anything. I mean, just not have, not shooting fast. Okay. So, so just sort of like going at a good cadence, a good rate, but just, um, but kind of going a little bit more methodical and that, that, uh, yielded a good result. The 190, this, it was definitely the smallest group at 200 for the entire match. And it got me the first place trophy. So that's another sort of kernel to take out of this is you know that was my strategy was i'm gonna take my time on this one and do really well uh, and it did um and so again rifle is in tune uh, because i turned that tuner okay got first place at 200 and then basically the aggregate for 100 and 200 for sporter i got first place on that too so um at that point you know i'm thinking things are going pretty good um, heavy varmint starting off at 100 and a 263. Notice the uh, vertical. Uh, there was tons of wind pushing at our backs. And so I just have the sense that, and once the flags are oriented that way, you can't really see the tails of the flags. Um, the tails are a little like surveyor's tape that help you help you determine the intensity of the wind. All you see is your flag's kind of going that way and maybe some twirlies from, from the tape, but you can't really see what degree angle is the tape to get an estimate of the intensity. So um, lots of people had vertical for that reason. You just, it was just hard to sort of tell like, you know, what, what how fast and hard was it blowing behind us? So this was not atypical of, of sort of how people were shooting. Um, next one was a 218, so low two. So I was happy with that. That was fairly consistent with um, the other 100-yard performance. And then a 330, I <laughs> I think I got caught on a wind condition. Again, I probably should have shot heads up on this one. I don't know why I didn't. Um, but yes, one landed out of the group and definitely wind condition. This Again, my learning experience is shoot heads up in, in those high wind conditions. Anyway, next match, I redeemed myself. Um, same thing kind of happened um, as uh, the Sporter 200, the last, you know, match of that uh, match series where, you know, the flags just kind of calmed down and, and it just felt like, okay, things are really good right now. Mild, mild conditions. Uh, flags were, you know, the tails were still moving a little bit, just a little bit swirlies, but, you know, looking pretty darn good to try to shoot a small group. Um, that's what I did. Shot a one three one, smallest group for um, a hundred yards uh, for heavy varmint, and that helped my score tremendously. Okay, um, next match two forty five dropped one again. Outgoing wind at that point. Wind kicked back up and and got me. So anyway, at a hundred yards, got the first place. So and then that one three one was a small group. So I was happy about that. Uh, did pretty good. So. Going in at 200, uh, here's, an, you know, and the third kind of major point here uh, that I want to make is, is, you know, the strategy. What strategy am I going to take, you know, in windy conditions? You can certainly take a strategy where, you know, you're going to wait out conditions and you're going to try to get the most ideal conditions or shoot, you know, you're going to wait for whatever condition you, you need to shoot in. Um, or, you know, you could just kind of be conservative and say, you know, I may shoot in variable conditions, but they're not going to be that variable and the group's not going to be that big. Um, and I'm going to do that because I just want to retain my lead and not shoot big and just shoot kind of, you know, um, you know, what, what would be acceptable and what would land me the first place trophy in the match, okay? So this is kind of the third big uh, takeaway. Uh, that's what I did. I just decided like, okay, I'm, I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna shoot good groups, but I'm not gonna risk a whole bunch because that risk is, <laughs> if, you, if you mess that up, it's a bad outcome. And, and in fact, I spoke with one of the uh, fellow shooters who had a bad outcome. And he, that's exactly what he said. He said, you know, I, I, I shot four, they were in a tiny hole and then 
I just kept going and and I, you know, fired again and the big wind gust came and put that bullet out an entire inch, okay? And then, caught, or, or even more, I think. I think it was maybe inch and a half, two inches. Um, and that totally destroyed his score. So I was just trying not to do that. <laughs> and, and, and I thought to myself, I just want to finish the match um, doing decent, decent enough to win the match, okay? So that was my match strategy at that point. And you can see, you know, 538 at 200. Um, 356, I still shot good on, on this one. You know, I think conditions, again, uh, were, were fairly nice. Again, I say fairly nice because, uh, you know, <laughs> it was it was pretty windy, stormy, rainy. Um, and so I thought, okay, good. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Um, 519, again, not small, but not big so i'm still thinking i'm following my match strategy this one was disappointing and i thought crap um one did go way left um i again i probably should have shot heads up on that but i didn't um again learning experience so i i thought though okay i'm still good to go i'm still in the running for the win um last one i had a good one going and then i got caught up on a wind um and one kind of flew out uh, 575, but still acceptable. And and the reason why some of these higher ones, these fives, you know, and even this seven was acceptable was because the conditions were so bad that other shooters were shooting, you know, eights, one, one inches, et cetera. So in, in relation to others, um, these were actually really good scores. So um, at 200 yards, I took third. And then um, the Sporter Grand Aggregate 100 and 200, I took third. And then basically at the end, when everything was calculated for the two gun, the Sporter and Heavy Varmint, I took first. And this is the trophy for uh, the first place. It's the Manly Oakley Award trophy. And if you look at the names on there, you know, you see a lot of uh, Larry Boers, uh, Jeff Lewis, Steve Kostinich, Mustafa Bilal. Uh, Jeff Cross, you know, you're seeing all these great shooters on this trophy and uh, just happy to be on it myself. And it was great when uh, Steve Kostinich and Larry Boris were talking about Manly Oakley. Manly Oakley was their uh, mentor and helped them sort of, uh, you know, help them shoot Ventrest group. And you know, if you know Steve and, and Larry, you know, they've had world records and they're they're just phenomenal shooters. So Manly Oakley, you know, really helped them out, helped them get into the sport and do well. Um, and so we had a little talk about mentorship and, you know, it's just uh, definitely something I, I'm a mentor to. I've uh, supported Jeff Cross, trying to, you know, helped him out and you, know, you see he's doing doing really good. And so we just kind of, you know, uh, rem they were reminiscing about Manly Oakley. And I thought to myself, you know, big lesson here, mentoring, you know, uh, you can make a big impact on on somebody uh, and uh, hopefully help them out and be positive for their uh, shooting experience. So anyway, those were kind of the big takeaways of the match. And it was it was just great getting back, great seeing everybody and getting behind the trigger. Um, looking forward to hopefully shooting uh, the group shoot next month. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, please uh, like, share, subscribe, and uh, please check out my Patreon. We have a lot of really good stuff going on there. Uh, lots of great uh, discussion. Um, it's It's not a high volume forum where uh, people are just putting stuff on there that, you know, it has minimal to no value. Uh, most of the stuff in that Patreon is, is pretty good value. I'm posting almost every day, um, doing little tests on the side that I don't necessarily post on YouTube. So please come over to Patreon. The paid members get, uh, full access to, to everything. Um, it'd be great to have you there. Um, lots, lots of, lots of benefits well over YouTube, um, when we have lots of interactions. And in fact, um, somebody that was subscribed to my Patreon was a paid patron, um, created his own. And now he has people subscribing to him. He's also started his own company uh, and we're working together on, uh, sort of developing, uh, tools, you know, to, 
to uh, assist in, you know, making our loads better and being better shooters. So anyway, it's just wonderful, constructive stuff going on there. So I hope you can make it over. All right, everyone, take care and shoot small.